on the go while traveling with kids and just our experience because we had a lot of questions asked and my husband, my beautiful husband <laughs> Sham, is going to just help me with everything. <laughs> the question we get asked a lot is how do you travel, how do you travel with children and kind of what our take is on it. And we got married super young. Andrew was 19, I was 21. And a lot of people were like, don't you want to travel, see the world, like getting married is settling down, your life is going to change. And our whole take was who better to have life experiences with that you're going to have forever with the person you're going to be with forever. And so having a family and getting married and traveling just seems so natural and something that we wanted to share with our children as well. Um, yeah, life doesn't have to end when you get married. Like, exactly. We just thought... Everything we're going to do, we're just going to do it together and figure out how to make it happen. And so, yeah, it doesn't mean everything always works out, but we've definitely had, you know, we were looking back on some really cool experiences over the year. And so I think that mentality really helps. If our children can see how small the world is, then the possibilities for them will be that much greater as far as their perspective on what they can do and where they can go. So before we talk about like how to do it in a healthy way, I thought we could talk about um, how to make it interesting for kids. Because a lot of people think you can't travel with young kids, but mm. it's so fun. And I think the best thing to do is just have like the mentality to have no expectations. Like just have the expectation to have no expectations. <laughs> and just like pick like one main activity a day and just kind of go at the pace as your kids, you know, not like this big checklist, like you have to do everything. Yeah. And the cool thing about kids too is people respond to them mm -hmm. and a lot of situations that happened on our trip were because people like love the kids and they are like, come, like, I want to show you something and all of a sudden we're doing something that like the local, like a local experience that we would have never expected and so even if you don't have kids, just like slowing it down and having opportunities to meet people and start talking and that always turns into something, some random yeah. adventure you weren't planning. So We started our trip off in France, uh, Biarritz, and we were staying kind of in the city center. And the link for the Airbnb we stayed in is in the description, but it was a super cool spot, perfect mm -hmm. for our kids. and. That's one of the biggest things that we look for when we go into a new town or a new city is look for a local market because that's the best place to shop, the healthiest place to shop. And it's a cool experience for the kids too to go in. Like Tama would literally eat a kilo of cherries almost a day because it's so fresh and he could go and pick them out and it's like an experience for him and Ira and so it's one of those things that makes the experience like unique and just fun for for any kid. Yeah, the market's like the heart of the city and mm. it's such a good way just even if you're not into health just to go and just to feel like you're getting to know your area and so saves money, it's a great cultural experience and it's a great way to try the local fresh foods which are always the best tasting anyways. And our Airbnb was awesome 
because it saves money in the end because you're cooking at home a couple meals a day and also you can do laundry and all that kind of stuff so yeah. we really love staying in a couple Airbnbs along this trip. Like as you saw in like the little clip before, the kids skated almost everywhere because it's it makes it easier for them so they don't have to walk yeah. everywhere. That's the other part. People say, yeah, Europe trip is something you want to do when the kids are out of the house, but it's such an awesome place to go with kids. Like Europe is a very family friendly trip because a lot of the communities are centered around like family activities. And so there's skate parks all over France. Um, there's hiking all over Europe. Mm -hmm. Beautiful beaches. We got to surf in Beer Eats. We got to skate. Spain. We surfed in Spain too. To finish up with what is it like to travel with young kids and how to do it successfully for us would be to have like low expectations, mm -hmm. plan something a day, keep them nourished because sugar crashes just lead to yeah. whining and crying. Yeah, nourishing is a big part of it for mm -hmm. us. You know, the kids are happy, they got energy, and they want to do things. It just makes the world a difference. Another thing that we do to keep it really interesting and seems to make the kids happy and feels more like, gives more depth to the trip is to try to cut out electronics as much as possible. And so what we did is we bought these little journals and the kids would draw on it before we'd eat. If we'd sit down to eat, we'd pull out the journals and they could we'd have them draw something from the day and write something if they're old enough to write. And these now are like such cool and like so cute to see like what stuck out to them and just good memories. It just like really ingrains it and before you know it they're just, they're excited to write in their books because you talk about them and they've forgotten their electronics. And so that was huge and then you know just like doing little pop quizzes like okay who can remember how to say hello in French? Just fun little things to um, help them realize that they're somewhere else you know. Those are two things that we do also to make it like more meaningful and like to absorb more of where we are. Absolutely. So to go along with how do you eat healthy while you travel, a lot of people ask like do you pack your own food? And that can be really helpful, especially if you have um, health problems and it's really hard to find foods. For us, we try to do that as little as possible just simply to um, force ourselves to find what's in the area and food for us is just a really beautiful way to experience the culture and so if you have to like major allergies like and that takes away stress totally pack things but if you don't need to I would I don't know I think we'd recommend just like getting creative and treating the food part as much of an adventure as you know sightseeing and everything else so we'll just list off a couple different places that are really good for both Beer Eats and Bordeaux uh, to eat that are like standard, no miss, excellent options, you won't be disappointed. Uh, Bali bowls is awesome, quick, fast, uh, acai bowls, super good for the kids, our kids love acai bowls obviously. <laughs> and um, La Tandem, which is a great restaurant, has excellent options for kids. The Buddha bowl there was so, so good. And there's and the curry bowl. And the curry bowl. The gluten free shop right across the street from where we were staying, next to the market in B Reeds, which was epic. Uh, for obviously Andrea. And in Bordeaux, the markets are absolutely incredible. The Sunday market is something that makes us cry sometimes <laughs> when we miss it. It's so good. It's true. We love food so much, but it's so fresh and you can always find the specialty from the regions there. And it's right by the skate park too. Yeah, right on the river, which is awesome on a Sunday. Um, I believe it's on Wednesdays as well. And then Marche du Capucin is open every single day of the week. And they have all local produce and yeah, just really, really good options for making it simple and easy to eat well. I hope that answered a few of the questions. We'll answer some more in our next video, which will be about Switzerland. And <laughs> I'm